just three months into our life of full-time travel, and we're getting into a routine for travel days. It's not like jumping in a car ready to go on a road trip. There's still a lot of stress in making sure we do everything we can to travel safely. And this next destination could be a lot of fun. This week, we're sharing what bus life is really like. No, it's backwards. This has never happened before. Taking you with us on a travel day. This is the portion that's very, very important. We will see firsthand all the planning, time, and stress that ends in one of the most frightening. Okay, is this guy nice here? No, he's brutal. He'll kill you. <laughs> he will absolutely tear you to pieces. <laughs> but one of a kind experiences we've ever had. Good morning. Today is a travel day. It's time to start heading south for the winter. We're still pretty new to being full-time travelers and we haven't filmed too much of our travel days because honestly, it's stressful. We're kind of getting into a flow now, so we thought we'd take you along on our travel days so you can see what it's like driving a 40-foot bus around and towing a vehicle behind you. Now when we've been still for five days, we kind of spread out and things get a little messy in the bus. The cats can kind of tell when it's moving day, because it kind of gets a little crazy. One of the most important parts of travel days is planning out our route. We got restrictions with weight, of course, because we've got a big bus. We've got restrictions with height. We don't want to drive under a bridge that's too short or we'd have some serious problems. We use a special app to plan out our trip that takes all of those things into consideration. And check the elevation map for the trip so we're prepared for steep inclines or descents. At this point, we've got our destination and our basic route planned. Mela has the directions in the RV Life app on her phone. However, we're going to use another navigator just to be safe, and I'm going to use my Garmin. This time, I'm going to Google Maps. I'm finding the GPS coordinates because Garmin is horrible with trying to find addresses. I paste those coordinates in to the Garmin app itself and then pass that information on to my Garmin device. At this point, Mel and I make sure we got the same directions once again. And now we've checked once, twice, and have a third device, all helping us get safely to our destination. I also like to make sure I've got a full water next to me for the drive and some coffee. And I usually check to make sure Mel has one too. By the way, pick up your one bite at a time official Rehabitate water bottle. We got a link to our merch below. I always rearrange the fridge as well before we go. I kind of put things like bread in the front because as you drive, things fall forward and then the fridge gets locked up for travel. I like to use travel days as empty out and full up days. Compost for our worm farm. I'm gonna fill up on peat moss for our composting toilet. Most things have their place. Then they stay there in our kitchen area and our coffee maker goes up in the basket. And then the only thing we leave out is our fizzy water maker and that we bungee cord down. Drawers get locked and shut. I bungee my monitor in place and bungee the wonder chair in the back and check to make sure the guitars are secured. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. It'll be a short day, I promise. He knows what's up. And then it's time for me to get my nasty gloves out. This is the portion that's very, very important. I usually head back to the back of the bus, the engine compartment. First thing I do is check coolant, see if I can see the coolant in the sight level. I then go ahead and do the checks of regular things, belts, oil, and then because we turn off the batteries to the bus every time we park somewhere, I gotta flip those back on, start the bus up, and let it warm up and get our air pressure up. The bus takes some time to air up and warm up, so we start the bus while we continue packing up. 
At this point, Mr. Sweet normally runs and hides underneath the bed. The little guy's getting a little bit better. He's still curled up here. He's not super happy about it. His tail's a little puffed out. I'd say that's some improvement, but he's not hiding. He just doesn't like it. I hope he travels with me today. That would be nice if I could comfort him. I love you, sweet boy. <laughs> Pizzicato's gotten pretty used to the traveling, the sound of the bus, the buzzer, the starting of the engine. She'll go hide with her brother a lot of times for like an hour or two. Then she'll come out and hang out with us and see how we're doing. Having uh, Mr. Sweet curled up on the couch with the bus going, this is a big moment, guys. Now we'll jump back into the travel day in a moment, but first we have something important to share. Because of sponsors like Established Titles, we're able to keep making videos like these. In case you missed it last month, we surprised our brother and sister-in-law. They had the perfect clothes for the surprise. With one square foot plot of land in Scotland. Thus making them Lord and Lady. He's always <laughs> been a lady to me. Oh. <laughs> Is that how the Lord and Lady dance? Yep, so. just like this. <laughs> Under one square foot. <laughs> so the idea behind the one square foot is that everybody's purchasing a little bit at a time, but it just means everybody is buying that land to say nothing's going to happen on it, so it's preserving wildlife in the oh, woodlands and stuff. Cool. Like that. It was fun before, but yeah. then with conservation and carbon capture. Not only is this a fun novelty gift, but they also plant a tree with every order, working with one tree planted and trees for the future to support global reforestation. Use our link in the description below to shop their Black Friday sale and get an additional 10% off with our code REHABITATE. It makes a great last minute gift. They have couple packs with adjoining plots. A great idea for couples just like Bern and Megan. Uh, <laughs> the certificate shows a unique plot number so you can see the exact location of your land. Officially change your name to Lord or Lady. And have it on your credit card and even your dating profile. Established titles told us that the first 200 people to use our link will actually get their plots within like minutes of walking from Bernard and Megan's plot. If you want us to get your plot now, we could build a whole little Rehabitate Kingdom in Scotland. Not only is this a great gift, but your purchase will also help support our channel so we can keep staying on the road. Now that the bus is started and warming up, I'm gonna check my tires. Make sure they're inflated there. Now we do have a TST tire sensor system. That gives me a reading of temperature and air pressure as we're going down the road in case anything bad is happening. Now I also like to do a walk around, make sure all my luggage bay doors are closed and make sure nothing's just gonna fly open while we're driving around, of course. I'm also checking my airbags under my front tires and next to my drive and tag axle. And of course, checking for headlights, tail lights, marker lights, make sure everything's working so we're street legal. I'm gonna take out the trash, even if it's not completely full. It's easy to get rid of the trash here at a campsite. For the next week, we're gonna be staying at like free spots, harvest hosts, mooch and stuff like that. You never know where you're gonna be able to get rid of your trash. While Don is outside doing his checks on the exterior of us, I do my checks on the inside, just to make sure everything's strapped down. A bed travels down, I just check that it is locked on either side. All good. Spine character travels on the bed. Window chair and extra computer. Anybody want to buy this computer? <laughs> we have an extra computer we're carrying around until we can sell it. They're strapped in. Monitor strapped in. That's the back. I get my seatbelt out so I can travel. Something we discovered in our first week of travel was that our toe kick drawers, they are on push to open slides. And the ones that we use regularly, those ones started to swing open when you took a big corner. So we just kind of lock them now like we do the uh, fridge. The ottomans we just put in the bathroom and they stay there. Table goes down. Windows get closed because it's just too noisy with them open. 
and all the blinds they just go up they don't rattle around they're just totally fine as long as you close them and then I double check everything in the front the biggest thing to double check is that the kitchen cabinets are with the RV locks so they normally should be shut and locked but I just do a double check make sure they're all actually clicked in and then if we're plugged in one of the last things I do is do one more check to make sure there's nothing under the tires our electric this way I know we've got maximum charge for however we're gonna be out and about the next few days and my final task of getting ready to go is pulling out the reflectix which blocks the Sun from coming in our front window and making sure all my navigation tire pressure sensors brake sensors everything's plugged in and ready for the trip drive to highlighted route. And my final preparation to get ready to drive the bus is grab my Outdoor Master Glare Reflective UV sunglasses. These things are great because not only can I see the road and get the glare out, but I can also still see all my components like my navigation, my tire sensors. With most regular sunglasses, you can't see those things. Next thing we decide is when are we actually going to hook up our Jeep to the hitch? And we have to go to the dump station and empty our tank. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna drive in the Jeep, follow down there, and when we're there, while we're filling up water, because it takes a long time, we'll get the Jeep hooked up. Mr. Sweetface has gone into hiding, so the very last thing we do before we actually pull out of here is do a cat check. You don't know when you're going in and out to do checks on the exterior of the bus if he's scared and he's gonna slip out of the bus. Let's go find him in his hiding spot. Mr. Big Boy? Nope. Not there. Mr. Big Boy, you okay? If he's not under the bed, that's the next place he probably is and he feels safe. And then very important, we check the walkie-talkies. Walkie check one, walkie check. You're loud and clear, over. <laughs> Let's go. So we both just sort of fall into our roles. I take care of the fresh water. Don't like a gentleman takes care of the gray water. Now we have time while we wait for the fresh water to fill up. So this is a good opportunity to get the Jeep hooked up and ready to go. We have some rules. If you're leaving a campground, regardless of if your, your gray tank is like, only got like a quarter of a tank, you always dump the gray, you fill up the fresh, because now we're gonna be doing free camping for a while and we don't know when we'll be able to get fresh water or dump again. So it's just a precaution because you never know what's gonna happen. The other thing is you can't reverse when the Jeep is hooked up. So if you're exiting like a campground or camp spot and you're not sure if you can make the turn in one go, you might have to reverse and pull forward, etc., to get around a tight corner in this big bus. You don't want to be doing that with the Jeep hooked up. So it's best to just wait and find a better place to hook the Jeep up. Last thing to do once the Jeep is hooked up is we test brake lights, indicators, hazards. Right, brake test one, over. Brake lights are working, over. Right turn signal, over. No, it's backwards. The right turn signal on the bus is on and the left turn signal on the car is on. This has never happened before. Looks like we had connected it upside down. Good to know. Okay, it looks like it's working now. All right, left indicators are working, over. Right indicators are working, over. I'm testing the brake again, over. Brake lights are working, over. All right, we're ready to roll. And we use walkie-talkies because sometimes you're out somewhere and you just don't have cell reception. So walkie-talkies is more reliable. And now it's time for me to get in my seat. It's a lot of work just, you know, it's not like jumping in a car ready to go on a road trip. There's a lot more to it. 
but it's totally worth it when you get to go stay in a nice spot for the night. over a three hour drive because there's so much else involved. It took us maybe a little over an hour to get the bus all packed up and aired up and dump the water, hook the jeep up. We don't have to get any diesel today because we were full before we left. But sometimes you need to stop too so that can extend your day. There's so much to think about and especially for Don driving, there's so much he has to concentrate on. We like to keep it to a minimum so that, you know, your brain can stay sharp. We're gonna be crossing into Nebraska today. Are you excited, honey? Yes. <laughs> this next destination could be a lot of fun. After the stress of getting ready for a travel day, one of the many payoffs is seeing brand new scenery. Seeing the buttes of western Nebraska jetting out of the landscape was an unexpected sight to behold. We're just pulling into our Harvest Host for the night. If you don't know what Harvest Host is, it's a membership, you pay a yearly fee, and then you can park at any of these sites for free. There are wineries, farms, breweries, various attractions. And so far we've only stayed at wineries and today we're staying at a farm. We're quite excited about this farm. It's always a little stressful arriving and just not being 100% sure like where to go in your big bus. We're on a dirt road, we're going slow. <laughs> Our bus and Jeep is still so dirty from the last harvest host we stayed at. Haven't had a chance or an opportunity to clean the bus yet. It's probably a good thing because we're probably getting really dirty again on this dirt road. <laughs> at least it's not a washboard road like the last one. Some massive bison poops though. Yep. And there's massive bison poops because it's a bison farm. I've never seen a bison in my life. I'm super excited. To see him. We're so close, but so far. <laughs> Once we pull into our spot, we get out the level. More, please. And do our best to put the bus in as flat a position as possible. More. We just arrived. Have to sign a waiver to be here <laughs> because of the bison that you're gonna be safe and not do anything risky. And all the stress of this travel day was worth it, seeing these majestic beasts right out the front of our bus. What do you think? What do you think? Hmm? You still want to go out there? Are you crazy? You want to go out there with the bison? You do? This is Rancher Rick. He's been around bison his entire life and runs the Rocky Hollow Buffalo Company. He's invited us to give the bison some treats. It's so freaky, they're all coming towards us because they know we've got a food. But it's like, ah! Special, show them how special you are. She's a good girl. Thanks for the snot. <laughs> Wait, did you get hit in the face with any snot? No. I, did, I just did. <laughs> oh, mouthful. Oh, 
Now, Mama, did you want to tell me one of the prettiest ones out here, sweetie pie? Okay. Don't be bashful. All 200 of the bison have names, and Rick knows all of their personalities. A three-year-old bull. Hi. Yeah, hi. Here you go. Come here. Okay, we're going to go up here. You want to come with us? Huh? Go for a walk? This is a herd queen. She's one of the bosses. Hi, Mama. Yeah, I know. You're in a rush. Hi, Annie. What you doing, Annie? That's the boss bull right now. He's the smallest bull. This is Rockstar. Hi, Rocky. Thank you, guys. The herd knows it's treat time, so they're following us around. He's just boring. Hi, I know. <laughs> so, hold it at the end. Uh -huh. As soon as you feel her grab it, no, listen to me. Yeah. As soon as you feel her grab it, you let go. Okay. So, should you open, you'll get opportunity, okay? Okay. You do not stick your heads outside of this vehicle. Okay. If she sticks her head in, you keep your head back. We don't want any broken jaws today. Okay. okay. We all know where it went. Gravity. Hold it at the end, stick it out. Oh, nope, it's okay. Don't look down. Keep your head right where it's at. Okay. She'll look. She'll look up here in a minute. Hi, Rockstar. There you go. There you go. Now this is Annie. Rocky, you're too close. Back up. Back up. That was. Just, she was pushing, pushing me into you, and I'm not having any of that. She's one of the most dangerous ones out here because she thinks I'm Mama. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy. She won't get in. Okay. But you didn't want to feed her. No. <laughs> you no. Know, no. this torture. No. You don't want to feed her? Come on. You want to do it? It's just like this. Watch. Seriously. I do. do. I do. See? <laughs> come here. All right, You'll get right. another chance, and another okay. one come up. Here's Annie. She's waiting for you. All right. Now, if you let go, don't worry about it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Keep your head right where it's at. Don't, okay. move. don't move your head. And don't you turn around because you got the biggest bull on the planet oh, right next to you. Right freaking behind. I'm not I'm serious. <laughs> We're going to move. Because it's okay. too close. Yep. There's another bull. This is a big bull. We are visiting at the end of mating season, when the bulls are restless, unpredictable, and are at their most dangerous. Bison, also referred to as buffalo in the US, are the largest surviving terrestrial animals in Northern America and Europe. And can grow to be nearly 7 feet tall and 11 and a half feet in length. Alright, sweetness, come here honey. Oh, is this a beauty? This is special. Here you go. Good job, man. Would you like, we're not done. <laughs> hey, look, you brought a bull in. Hey, buddy. Being this close to these amazing creatures and looking them directly in the eye, you see a gentleness, but their size and knowing how powerful they are was overwhelming. Hey, dude. What are you doing? Hey, dude. And seeing the bond Rancher Rick has with these majestic animals was beyond anything we imagined we would experience. Okay, is this guy nice here? No, he's brutal. He'll kill you. <laughs> he will absolutely tear you to pieces. While exhilarating, honestly, this is one of the most frightening experiences I have ever had. And it was so hard to capture with the camera, with the bison coming so close to us. Which made it even more nerve-wracking when Rick said... So you guys are going to hop out together, <laughs> set your phone up, and I'm going to get a picture of them in the background. What? Of you. Just, come on. Wait a minute. Just trust me. Sorry. You're fine. Just don't move, <laughs> and don't look behind you. Oh. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> I'd like to get in, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold on. Okay. We're gonna walk this way. Okay. Just 
Look out, Natasha. Back up. Rock. Get. Yeah. You go. You're like a buffalo arrow. <laughs> this is sweetness. Hello, sweetness. Hello. Getting into our routine for travel days has taken some time. And to be honest, it can still be stressful doing everything we can to make sure we arrive at our next destination. This has never happened before. But the payoff in new landscapes, once in a lifetime experiences and unforgettable adventures make every travel day worth it. Why are there? Feel like you got that pretty good? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, I don't want bubbling for your mouth. <laughs> there better not be any bubbling. Yeah, yeah, there better not be any bubbling, guys. You got some uh, slobber on Look you. Look at that. Ah, oh, gross. <laughs> we got licked by a bison. Did he lick you? Yes, he wanted to eat my pants. <laughs> I was very uncomfortable. I, I don't think I've ever been that uncomfortable before in my life. That was insane. It was a little overwhelming. Their heads are like this big. They can and they're coming you. right up against you. One of them was getting his horn in the four by four, moving it around a little bit. That was quite an experience. That was a little too close for comfort. <laughs> I think I was kind of frozen in the back there the whole time. I was so scared. I can't believe we just did that. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I'm not sure what to say. I'm a little speechless right now. <laughs> I might need a moment to compose myself. As this video is coming to an end, we realized we could have made an entire video of just our time at the Buffalo Ranch. We had so much good footage, and we're going to be sharing the deleted scenes from this episode with their habit tribes. Yep, and they're wild. I mean, they are, these guys are every bit wild. These guys are just happen to be comfortable and acclimated to humans. If you want to see even more footage from our adventures, get real-time updates and join community chats, sign up on Patreon today and become one of our beloved supporters who continues to help us make these videos.